Hola amigos, this is Somber and welcome to CodePipe. Today we are going to see 10 useful modules from Python that will be really helpful for beginners. But before that, let me try to give you my opinion on the importance of packages and modules in any programming language. Programming language is nothing but a framework or a base based on which many applications or softwares are built. They are built using different libraries and packages from that programming language. Python is also a programming language. We know that different applications and softwares are based on Python framework and I will give more credit to the Python packages that allowed developers to make new softwares. Let me tell you how we are going to look at these packages from Python that will be helpful for beginners. So we will have 10 packages. Each package may belong to a different field for different purposes. What I want to show from this video is if you are a beginner in any programming language I would recommend you to go through different packages or modules or different varieties of applications that are built on that language so that you will find out what fits with your personality and what makes you a good programmer. And who knows maybe by going through one of the packages you might feel it is very comfortable for you and you may start using it regularly. So without any delay let's see the top 10 modules for beginners. First one in our list is TK Inter or basically TK interface. TK Inter is widely considered as standard for GUI applications or graphical user interface applications where user will have buttons and a good interface to interact with the application instead of big lines of code. This is the documentation for TK Inter and we can see TK Inter is basically a standard for TK GUI toolkit that is present in Python. We can easily make Python scripts convert it into .exe and we have our software ready. If you want to go in the software development field where we interact with the GUI applications, this is our go-to module. Next on our list, we have JSON. We can see JSON as a syntax for storing and exchanging data. The definition itself defines that if we want to exchange data between two frameworks or between an API or the application, we use JSON. We can think of it as a universal language or a universal notation where we can transfer data from one framework to another with ease. This is the documentation for JSON that is inbuilt in Python. If you are looking for a career in making APIs, working with different frameworks, JSON is a must for everyone. Next up on our list we have Pygame. As the name suggests it is basically to develop games that are based on Python framework. Pygame is free and open source so anyone can use it. It provides cross-platform multimedia capability which loosely means that we will be able to control our multimedia devices like mouse, controller, joystick, keyboard, screen etc. using the module. This is the documentation for Pygame 2.0 which is the latest one and we can think of it as Somewhat similar to TK Inter where we have to provide GUI applications or some interface to the user so that they can interact with the game easily. Next up on our list we have Beautiful Soup. Beautiful Soup is mostly used when we require to extract information from HTML files and XML files. It usually works very well with a parser, HTML or XML parser which provides Pythonic ways of extracting information from the files. This is the documentation for Beautiful Soup 4 or sometimes referred to as BS4. This capability of Beautiful Soup to extract information from HTML and XML files has made it a good choice for internet information scrapping. And we all know scrapping information from internet can be used in a lot of different ways. We can use it for machine learning, data analytics and many other things. We can also combine one or two more packages with Beautiful Soup to get more advanced results like if we use selenium we can kind of automate the information scrapping that can be useful in many ways if you are looking for a career in web automation and information scrapping you might want to start with beautiful soup selenium request etc next up on our list we have pillow pillow is a friendly fork from pil which is python imaging library pillow is widely used for image processing storing and processing the images it provides capability to handle extra formats and new options to process the images. Pillow is compatible with different packages like Django, Flask, many GUI applications like TK Inter, etc. 
also pillow allows to extract some statistical information from the images which can be used for data analytics or we can use for auto enhancing the image there are other modules from python like movie pi which helps us in editing the audio and video so if we want to go in audio or image editing career we can start from here next on our list we have open cv open cv is a library from c++ which is included in python open cv stands for open source computer vision library as the name suggests it has several hundreds of computer vision algorithms which makes it very useful for image processing as well as video processing this package is very suitable for image processing where we can create a new image we can put text on it we can put drawings on it as well as it is very useful for video applications also it is not surprising that machine learning experts are using open cv for various purpose like object detection 3d reconstruction camera calibration and many more things open cv is highly advanced in processing images where images are captured as an array and these arrays can be manipulated according to us where we can change the color of the image we can make them negative and many more things if we are planning to go for a career of video processing video analysis face recognition open cv is a place where we start next on our list we have django framework django is mainly used for web developments it is very fast and very flexible where everything in the back end is handled by the django django can handle the request the security of forms that will be submitted and the interaction between database and our application this allows us to focus more on the programming and less on the back end of how request will be made how we will save our information in database etc one of the advantage of using django is it is scalable django provides the capability to handle the interaction between html files our views our forms our database some other python packages that are used in web development are flask and pyramid so if you are planning to go for web development using python django is the place where we start the next three packages that we are going to discuss now can be interrelated to each other to form something new or they can be used stand alone if we want to use them separately next in our list we have pandas pandas is specially used for data manipulation or data extraction or useful data extraction from a complex structural or unstructural data it can work with different types of data whether it is tabular hierarchical excel labeled ordered or unordered so basically if we want to do anything with the data pandas should be the first thing in our mind we can get good results if we use numpy in combination with the pandas so if we are thinking to go into data analysis we should try out with pandas next on our list we have matplotlib which is basically visualizing our data suppose we have extracted data using pandas or numpy or any other package and we want to visualize it or we want to see the data in front of our eyes to see what is happening then matplotlib should be there to help us in the documentation we can see it is very helpful for creating animated static or interactive visualizations using python libraries it also provides the capability to customize the graph or visualization we have so this can be used in combination with pandas so that we have a complete information on our data last but not least we have tensorflow in our list tensorflow is a very powerful library which is released by google itself in the documentation we can see that tensorflow is available for our python projects for javascript for mobiles and for production also we can use tensorflow so tensorflow is basically a base based on which we can create our machine learning or deep learning models this can be best used with keras scikit learn where we pre process our data using pandas numpy we visualize our data using matplotlib so that our data is ready to be formed a deep learning model then we will use tensorflow to make a deep learning model that will be trained on the data and we can use it in production one of the good example of tensorflow usage is object detection where we use open cv pandas and the tensorflow to interact with each other so that we will get a model that will be used to detect objects live tensorflow can be used for various other purpose like text generation chatbots and image recognition 
so that was our list where we went through the top 10 modules that every beginner should at least try when they are starting out a new programming language again the purpose of this video was to help beginners understand what type of careers they want to choose or what programming style they want to choose once they start with their programming career if you like the video please hit the thumbs up it will help youtube understand the video was good and it will recommend to others if you are new to the channel i upload videos on every sunday so if you want to support me and have a look at my videos please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to help me choose a new topic for my videos you can support me on patreon where i will start taking polls on what topics should i make as a video we will meet very soon with a new video until then this is somewhere taking your leave adios